past him. Don't try to talk. Where the hell is that bloody ambulance? Be here. Bastards. Two of them. According to our only witness. And? Both young and black. Some clothing description. It's all right. Get what you've got over the radio to every available car and beat man in the area, and I want these bastards caught. After death, you call that nothing, you black bastard. Get out of it. Who, Mum? Who the hell do you think? Your suspect mugger, Mum. I mean the Pope. In the cells. Right. Doctor's with him at the moment. Seems how he resisted arrest. Must have resisted fairly seriously. The doctor be already. Oh, he's all right. A few bumps and bruises. Doctor was here already, taking a blood sample from some idiot who drove his car through a shop window. Where's the arresting officers? Your mugger, CID room, making their report. They have a name, do we? Oh, gave him the obligatory spin before dubbing him up. According to this, he is one Leroy Winston Jones, aged 18, 25 Figaro Road. Figaro Road? Isn't that a few streets away from where the old man was mucked? Yeah. Found this in his possession. Well, don't. Lebanese black, I guess. Yeah, well, it'll do for a holding charge. Or an organised warrant. Check out the address. No, not yet. Check the uh, files from recent muggings in the area. See if anyone's lost anything resembling these. Well, what would you call recent? Well, use your imagination. Or let me know when the doctor's gone. I'll check for any form. Resisted arrest. You still here? Only the wicked rest. Right. What's the story? suggestion, Sergeant, but I think it would be wise just to let him sleep tonight. All right, Izzy. There is a proper complaints procedure, if he wants to avail himself of it. Yes, I'm sure there is. Then what? Well, we told him not to be silly and to come quietly. And? Well, he made it pretty obvious he wasn't too keen on the idea. Right, but... That's right. First we got the usual, just because I'm black verbal, liberally spurs for obscenities. Yeah, and the honky pig routine. So we moved in to arrest him with the minimum force necessary. Right. Let me have a copy as soon as you completed it. Hello? Uh, 
Yes, I'm Detective Inspector Forbes, Seven Dials Police Station. I was at the hospital about 40 minutes ago with a victim of a mugging, an elderly gentleman called Mr. Mullery. Um, I just wondered, could you tell me what his condition is? Yes, that's right. Thank you. Yes. Yes, I see. Yeah, I understand that. Okay, thanks. How is he? I couldn't help overhearing. Intensive care, as well as can be expected. Think you'll pull through? You might. Well, I don't mind a bit of overtime on a thing like this. It's all right, I'll handle it. I meant background stuff. Check out any fantasy alibi he's bound to spin you. All right. God, you should have seen what they did to him. Yeah, I know. I've seen a few myself. That's your spades for you. Personally, I'd pull the lever on scum like that. Got any witnesses? One. Pretty good on size, age and clothing. Colour? Always very good on colour. Faces? Seen one, seen them all. Witnesses' words, not mine. Not too clever, is it? Two for starters. If the one they've nicked is one of them, I'll know it. Trouble is, it's not infallible, is it? What? Instinct. Oh? Right, Harry, I'll be down. I won't tell you what the doctor said, and he's bound to make a report. Just open the door, Harry. Leroy Winston Jones. Is your name Leroy Winston Jones? This license is yours, isn't it? Yes, well, it won't take us long to find out. And you can wipe that look off your face, whoever you turn out to be. For the moment, you're being held in custody on suspicion of being in possession of dangerous drugs. Anything you say will be taken down and may be used in evidence, do you understand? All right, Sarge. Get his clothes to forensic straight away. Yes, ma'am. Wrong attitude, son. Wrong attitude. It doesn't amount to much if it's in. Warning for shoplifting at 15, two sus charges shortly after, and no conviction. Escalation, Jake. Applies to most things. Even a bank robber starts off with a bit of petty. Got a fact. But what about the jewellery? Give us a chance. I'm working on it. Great. How's it going? Oh, nearly done, man. Let's take it on my desk when you finished. You ready for that bit of overtime? Good hunting, 191. Sorry, Sarge? I've arrested him, actually, Sarge. Worrying sheep, was he? Obstruction, actually, Sarge, and a possible assault. All right, Constable. You can let go his paw now. That him? Yes. This is your son, Mrs. Jones. Yes, that is my Leroy. Could you please tell me what it is you want with him? Uh, well, in that case, I'm afraid I have to tell you that he is presently being held in police custody on suspicion of being involved in a serious offence. Oh, my Lord. Now, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you some questions. Would you like to sit down, Mrs. Jones? My Leroy, he's a good boy, a good, respectable boy. He won't do nothing wrong. He's been arrested three times in the past. Do please sit down, Mrs. Jones. I have a son about the same age myself, so I know you must be feeling... He's a good boy. Those rest of times, it was all a mistake. When did you last see him? He was home for his tea. What time was that? He's not a bad boy, my Leroy. I brought him up respectable. What it is you're accusing him oh, of? Oh, no, nothing yet. No. It could be a mistake, like all the other times. But if we could establish his movements this evening, it would be of help to him. Do you understand? Please, don't patronise me, Miss Policewoman. Look, I realise this has come as a bit of a shock to you. Um, perhaps you'd uh, li like a cup of tea. I wouldn't mind one myself, actually. And that's when I moved in to arrest him, Sarge. Right. Now, let's see if I got this right. 
You were on your beat when you saw this gentleman outside the Carlton Club. I was travelling in a northerly direction, Sarge. I'm deliberately avoiding irrelevances, Constable Worth. It's what we call in the profession summarising the facts. Sorry, Sarge. To continue, you saw this gentleman outside the club, surrounded by a group of people. You noticed quite a bit of arguing going on amongst them, so you went to investigate. <coughs> um, if I may say something, Sergeant. If you'll just be patient, sir, you'll have ample opportunity to make a statement. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, of course, sir. So sorry. Sir, upon arriving at the scene of the incident, a small fracker broke out, during the course of which this gentleman struck out with his banner, causing it to strike the head of another gentleman in the crowd. Right so far? In essence, yes, Sarge. The alleged assault... Oh, he did it, Sarge. I saw him. The alleged assault having taken place, you then took the name and address of the person allegedly struck. The Major Charles Blatchley Smythe. Who said he wished to press charges of assault on this gentleman. Right, Sarge. It didn't occur to you to bring the victim of this alleged assault here to make a statement? Ah, oh, he said he had to get home to Lady Blatchley Smythe, Sarge. Really? Right. Now, sir. Full name and address. No pause, sir. Police. They don't like coloreds. The last time, they tell a lot of lies about my son. Mrs. Jones, I do not tell lies or manufacture evidence against anyone suspected of a crime. Be they yellow, red, white or black. Now, if you wish to tell me the last time it was that you saw your son, fine. If not, I shall find other means of establishing it. He came home about half past five. He left again about six. I haven't seen him since. Did he say where he was going? He usually go to the youth club on evening. What youth club is that? The Caribbean Youth Club. It's on oh, Church that's Street. That's right, I know it. Um, well, did he say if he was meeting anyone particular, a friend? He's got friends, dear. Well, I'm sure he has, Mrs. Jones, but usually boys of that age, they, well, they've got a couple of special friends that they see a lot of. No special friends. Leroy get on with everybody. Well, perhaps you know some of his friends. I mean, mates of his that call round here. I mean, if you could give me their names, perhaps they could help establish Leroy's movements this evening. Mrs. Jones. His friends, they don't come here. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't quite... What? His friends don't come to this house. Are you saying that you don't know any of your son's friends? That you, that you, you don't see any of them? Mrs. Jones? Look, I'm a Christian woman. Things are different here. These young people, they're born here. They think different. Mrs. Jones, what about your husband, Leroy's father? Is he... I mean, would it be possible for us to have a word with him? He isn't here. He's gone back home. Home? Do you mean to the West Indies? Yes. To the West Indies. He went back five, six years ago. Do, do just uh, you and your son live here, then, Mrs. Jones? I mean, there are no other children. No. Look, I'm his mother. I'm entitled to know what you think he's done. He fits the description of someone seen running away from a robbery. Rob? No! Has your son got a job, Mrs. Jones? <laughs> He's 18 and coloured and in so-called recession. Has any one of them got a job, Mr. Policeman? Quite a lot, actually. Only if Leroy's out of work, what is he on the dole or what? On the dole? What else? That well, doesn't amount to much. Cigarette money for kids these days. Look, say what you want to say. Well, you, look, you, you've got to try and see it from our point of view. You see, when we picked your son up, he was found to have in his possession some pretty expensive items in gold. A medallion, a neck chain, a wristwatch, a cigarette lighter. The wristwatch was his father's. It was left for him. That still leaves the other items worth between them, at an educated guess, 150, 200 pounds. From dole money. Unless, of course, your son has some other source of income. Well, perhaps you, uh, does your husband send you money? Well, maybe you have a well-paid job or source of income that would allow you to give your son enough money to buy these things. I'm on social security too, Mr. Policeman. 
And that ain't no fault of mine either. Now, all Inspector Slater is trying to say, Mrs. Jones, that if you could give us some explanation regarding how your son came by these items, if legitimately, you could only help him. Look, when can I see my son? Tomorrow, perhaps. We um, still have other inquiries to make. Look, Mrs. Jones, I don't uh, want to cause you any more distress than necessary, but uh, do you think we could uh, have a look at Leroy's room? I, I wouldn't want to have to get a warrant. Clothes. Oh, yes, and... Um, could you give us a change of clothes for him? what we were doing in there. Making inquiries? No. We were doing a number on a, a job. A classic hard man, soft man, cop routine. So what's wrong with that? To a middle-aged, frightened woman who still hasn't got over the cultural shock of being in this bloody country. What she's got to hang on to is a religion and a son. And that makes you angry, does it? No. What makes me angry is I only just realised it. Are you comfortable in there? Perfectly, thank you. You could take the head off. I'd rather not, if you don't mind. Mr. Dean, you're under arrest. I could, should, insist. Yes, but, uh, well, it's a rather important part of the protest, you see. Yes, I rather think I do. Well, here you are. Not as comfortable as your earth, perhaps. A bit short on straw since we've changed to foam rubber for the mattresses. But I'm sure you'll make out. Being used to the open spaces. Tally-ho. Shift. Was. Start a fortnight, days as from now. Interesting night. And its moments. Yeah, what have we got? To... What is he, some sort of crank? I'm a police sergeant, sir. Not a psychiatrist. Uh, arresting officer PC Worth. Who he? On probation. This is his first arrest. I'm trying to be understanding. Yeah. Now we've got uh, D.I. Forbes, Jake Barrett on this mugging thing. Inspector Slater got caught up in a drunk driving turnout on his way home. Oh, is this uh, a tailor's window? Maybe they sold him a bad suit. Mm. All three still in custody? No, D.D. was bailed out after a blood test and a short rest in the cells. About Basil Brush, sir. Can you get one of your hounds to look after it? Yeah. Hmm. Out of curiosity, sir, why do you read the occurrence book in reverse order? I'm uh, funny that way. Mm. Working late on this week? Well, it's not a social life I'm leading. I thought you'd have been back. Mm. I had enough for one night. Oh, six lighters, 13 wristwatches, 26 chains with medallions. Yeah, only ten of those were St. Christopher's. Sir? So? Thought we'd be more popular these days of limitless travel. How well, far did you go back? Oh, God, only that far. Yeah, that's just on our little plot. Hello. Morning. Hello, oh, Doug. <laughs> for you, ma'am. Yes. Change your clothes. Where would you get them from? They're mine. From your wardrobe, I should imagine. What do you tell my mum for? She 
she uh, give you any problems? No, not particularly. She's a member of the old school of immigrants, you know, religious, respectable, and... Um, and, uh, Dignified, I suppose. Oh, all like that, are they? The old school? This uh, arresting officer's report reads like a double act, doesn't it? You know, they went in a bit strong, didn't they? Comes with the training. They didn't give me any reason to disbelieve them. Well, if it comes to trial, it's not going to help your case much, is it? Black suspect beaten up by police. It's a very effective defence tactic. He resisted arrest. You try telling that to a jury half made up of second, third generation immigrants not of the old school. Now, what about the victim? As of half an hour ago, still unconscious and still in intensive care. Now, I don't need to tell you to approach this case rationally and unemotionally, do I? The day I stop feeling emotional about it is the day I give up the job. Keep me posted, yeah? Right. Oh, well, Maggie, <clears throat> by the way, uh, did you hear about the fox that was captured by one of our intrepid young PCs last night? Yeah, of course, this morning. I'd, uh, I'd like uh, someone to uh, interview him, see if he's safe to release on bail. Have you got any suggestions? Oh, terrific. Why me? I think he thinks you're good with animals. All the more reason to stay on a mugging, I would have thought. Let's not malign our four-footed friends, right? Right. Right, right Mr. Dean. Walkies. An officer will be along to interview you shortly, Mr. Dean, if you'd like to take a seat. Unless you prefer to curl up in a corner. I realize I may be a figure of fun to you, Sergeant, but I can assure you the subject I'm protesting about is far from funny. No, sir. I'm sure it's not. Word outside, Harry. Harry. Jake. Harry, the man still has his costume on. Oh, you've noticed that, have you, Jake? Yes, I've noticed that. Keen observation is a great asset to a detective, Jake. You, uh, we take the piss out of me, would you, Harry? Harry, I can't interview someone dressed up as a fox. It's ridiculous. Now, listen. You may be going through a serious identity crisis. To force him to remove the symbol of his new persona too soon could cause a serious trauma. And you, as a compassionate human being, wouldn't want that. Goodbye, Harry. Good luck, Jay. Did the old man live on his own, ma'am? Yes, very much so. Shall we elbow the maudlin and move on this? By all means. Pete and I'll try and backtrack his movements while you try and get his story, right? Right. You don't have to try and humour me, you know, Sergeant. Humour you, Mr. Dean? By pretending you don't find it faintly ridiculous interviewing someone dressed as a fox. I don't find it faintly ridiculous, Mr. Dean. I do find it totally disconcerting. That's because you don't understand. Can you at least take the head off? The effect wouldn't be the same. But if you mean by that it's impressive, believe me, I'm impressed. It's a great costume. Realistic, well-tailored. Perhaps a towel could do a little trim. Apart from that, it's a gem. Thank you. But that's not quite what I mean. So tell me. I mean that by keeping the head on, you'll remember me, right? I'll never ever forget you, Mr. Dean. On that, you can lay odds. Well, that being the case, there's a good chance you'll remember what I say on the obscenity of fox hunting. That is the point of retaining the head. Right. Relax, Mr. Dean. I'm perfectly relaxed, thank you. Were you relaxed when you hit Major Blashley Smythe on the head with your banner? The man I hit, or to be more accurate, caught with a glancing blow which didn't cause him the slightest injury, was one of a group of so-called gentlemen who clearly drank too much and thought it'd be great fun to assault me both verbally and physically. You studied here, they persistently stroked you. In my experience, that is normally a pleasurable sensation. I mean, don't foxes like being stroked, Mr. Dean? You're doing it again, Sergeant. I am not some sort of crank. I happen to believe passionately in the cause. And I said poured and persistently stroked. Still seems like a good deal to me. <laughs> seems to me you're simply being facetious. I'm simply trying to understand you, Mr. Dean. I mean, in my way of thinking, it shows a remarkable lack of common sense to stand outside a club like that, dressed as a fox, and not expect a little abuse from its members. Foul-mouthed and physical abuse. If anyone was assaulted, it was me. You know, they're very good. Very good indeed. I beg your pardon? The eyes. Certainly capture that sly quality. What makes you think foxes are sly, Sergeant? Must be the eyes. Bloodhounds have sad eyes. Does that mean all bloodhounds are unhappy? I would be. If I had eyes like that. Ah! 
still the wrong attitude, son. Don't you know it's impolite not to stand up when a lady comes into the room? There now. That's not difficult, is it? Sorry about that, Mum. No problem, Sarge. All right, you can sit down. Look, Jones, I'm not going to give you the old there's two ways of doing this routine because if you're stupid enough not to know the easy way, that's your problem. I think your mother's wasting her time worrying about you. What'd you bother her for? You got the last right. Every right, sir. man. Still the wrong attitude, son. Your mother seems like a very nice woman. Oh, she seems. What's the matter? You've got problems looking beyond the colour of her skin. Get the chip off your shoulder, Jones. I don't get a sod what colour you are. If I was your complexion, lady, I wouldn't be standing here right now. Two youths robbed and any battered to death an old man last night. They were seen running away quite clearly by a witness. One of the youths fits your description and he was most definitely black. I didn't rob no old geezer. Not what you were doing last night, then? Looking about. Looking about where? Here and there. Doing what? This and that. Does your mother know you smoke dope? Not unless you told her. Anyway, who says I smoke? Lamb and Leb found in your possession, says you do. Look, I ain't got no dealings with that stuff, right? That was plotted on me by those two pigs who beat up on me last night. Searched your room last night, we found this in your ashtray. Shit! Did my mum see that? I think she thought it was an ordinary cigarette. I didn't disillusion her. Oh, she's got plenty of time for that. You're joking. My mum comes with the West Indies, you know. You think she don't know what a joint looks like? Being religious don't make her blind, you know. Then why leave it there for her to see? She don't normally come in my rooms. Only weekends to clean and that. But her idea of yours. Look, let's just leave my old lady out of this, right? There's one old man we most certainly can't leave out of it. I told you already. I don't know nothing about no old man getting robbed or beaten. Well, in that case, why can't you tell me where you were between 10 and 10.30 last night? Look, I don't know. I move around a lot. I don't take no notice of time. I wear a watch. Because my old man left it for me. Well, as you wear it, there's a peculiar reason not to look at it. What's a watch got to do with anything? Did your father run off with another woman? I don't have to tell you stuff like that. It ain't got nothing to do with what's going on down here, has it? So he did. Yeah. You ran off with some whore. It happens all the time. So what? So nothing. Just curious. What matters, as far as you're concerned, is that if you can't or won't give us an account of your movements between 10 and 10.30 last night, you're in serious trouble and we can't help you. Fox hunting exists for the same despicable reasons that the now illegal pastimes of dog fighting, cock fighting and bear baiting existed. It's the same purpose, to provide amusement for callous human beings. You talk again converted, Mr. Dean. Well, I've read arguments about pest control. It is not a form of pest control. So-called control argument was merely an excuse introduced by fox hunters to combat the protests of those of us for whom the killing of animals for amusement was morally unacceptable. I'll go along with that, but... You may also have noticed, Sergeant, that those pastimes that were made illegal were in the main the preserve of the working classes. It was rather a nice, if somewhat sick, irony that the changes in the law were made by the same privileged classes who made damn sure their own revolting blood sports of stag and fox hunting remained legal. Sounds more like a political argument than a moral one. Hmm. Both, Sergeant, and I make no apologies for it. You sure you don't want to take that head off? Your mother said you usually go to the Caribbean Youth Club of an evening, is that right? Yeah, I go there, now and then. Did you go there last night? I don't know. Probably. Look, I can't remember. Too charged from smoking to remember, is that it? That's your story, love, not mine. Well, if you don't tell me your story, I'm going to have to use my imagination, aren't I? Had you been drinking? Look, I don't drink. I'm not into poison. All right, so you hadn't been smoking or drinking. How come your memory was so bad about last night? Oh, well, maybe I've been given a... What's it? Amnesia? You've been examined by a doctor, Jones. There's nothing wrong with you except a few bumps brought about by your own stupidity in resisting arrest. Resisting arrest? <laughs> That's a lot, isn't it? Well, if you done nothing wrong, why did you run? Look, lady, when you're black and my age and two anemic-looking coppers jump out of a car at you, you'd be pretty stupid not to run. Because this is what happens if you hang around. And that's the only reason you ran? And I was holding. So you admit you're in possession? <laughs> it don't matter if I do or I don't, does it? I mean, when you stick me up in front of the magistrates, It'll be my word against yours. And we know who he's going to believe. 
Not that way. Anything I can do for you two gentlemen? Police officers. Yeah, I figured that or the council. The council? Yeah, I'm trying to get a grant to improve the facilities here. Having any luck? <laughs> no. Can't say that I am. Run things here, do you, sir? I'm the man, organizer, driver, and sole counselor for the kids that come here. A good help is hard to find these days. <laughs> Marcus Williams is the name. But you can call me Willie. Everybody does. <laughs> okay, Willie. Nice to meet you. And likewise. But I know you ain't here to give me good news. We're making inquiries into a mugging that took place in this area last night. An old man was brutally beaten and robbed. Hope you gentlemen don't mind me continuing with this while we talk. Only I've got a little trip out to the countryside arranged for some of the kids this afternoon. A reliable witness saw two black kids running away from the scene of the crime. As a matter of fact. We have a suspect in custody, Willie. We understand from his mother he spends a lot of time at this youth club. His name's Leroy Winston Jones. Ah, oh, presumably you know him. Yeah, I know him. And I know his mother. A good lady. A good lady. And what about Leroy? Is he a good boy? A man. If you think Leroy attacked an old man and robbed him, you've got it all wrong. That ain't his style. What is his style? I guess he's like a whole lot of kids these days. Full of energy, friendly, honest and likable. But also bored. And a bit resentful about their hopeless employment prospects, or any prospects. And I'm talking black and white. Tell me something I don't know, Mr. Williams. You don't know you've got the wrong boy in custody, officer. That's what you don't know. You know, Jones, all this hostility isn't exactly helping to convince me of your innocence. A little cooperation can only help you. It's not me who has to prove I didn't do anything. Oh, no, I didn't. Yes, but you do take my point. Look, I want to see my lawyer. Well, now, I was wondering when that was coming. I know my rights. Yeah, that too. Well, now, let me tell you something about my rights. If I choose to organize it, I can keep you locked up here for three days and for three nights. And unless you cooperate, that's exactly what I intend to do. Go on, then. You given any breakfast here this morning? Yes, but I didn't eat it. I had a cup of tea. Cup of tea? Do you want to tell me how you managed to drink it without, you know? The officer who took my statement was kind enough to provide me with a drinking straw. Yeah, that's Harry. Kindness itself. Yeah. I, uh, just had a call from the hospital. Mr. Mullery died a short time ago without regaining consciousness, so... So it's an armed murder inquiry. Oh, my God. Uh, sit down. How are you getting on with Jonas? He's very hostile, but I think I'm making progress. Yeah, now, look, I was glancing down this list of clothing. It's, uh... Gear, you took off Jones and sent off for forensication. Now, tell me, can you remember what it was you thought Mr. Mullery said to you just before the ambulance arrived? <clears throat> Sounded like a crocodile. Like a uh, imitation crocodile. Oh, my God, Jones's shoes. How could yeah, I have missed all that? All right, all right. So you're dealing with the case now. What do your instincts tell you? You think he did it? I do now. Yes. What's the matter? Can't you call a spade a spade? It's not that. I just can't see the necessity to use a derogatory appellation in reference to a perfect... Derogatory appellation? Where'd you get that stuff? What's wrong with the word spade? They call us honky pigs, don't they? I just don't see the need, that's all. After all, he was trying to be helpful. You call giving Jones an alibi for the time in question being helpful, do you? It couldn't be that he was simply trying to cover up for one of his own, could it? Well, 
Well, I can see how he might have a protective attitude toward the kids that use the club. But he right. As I was about to say, if that was the case, why would he offer any information about this other kid, Benjamin, his black too? Who knows? Maybe he doesn't belong to the same tribe as Willie. They're into all that, aren't they? If you don't mind me saying so, sir, that kind of prejudice really gets up my... Oh, turn it in with all this holy liberal crap, will you? Some poor old man's lying battered to a pulp in hospital and we know two spades are responsible. What do you expect me to feel towards him? Sympathy? The victim was a spade as well. Is Jake still in the interview room? Shall I go on the ante and find Might out? Not in the mood for jokes, Harry. Sorry, Mum, number two. You want to hear about Mr. Mallory, who just died. Really? Oh, if Inspector Slater phones you with anything, give me a shout. Will do. Uh, can't let anybody in. Well, they would have answered by now. Not if they were expecting us to call, would they? We'll sit over there for a bit, wait and see if he comes. Don't know what to say. Too bloody awful. Yes. Anyway, I want to keep at Jones, and I need someone else present. There's like a ghost town around here today, and I was wondering how much longer you were going to be with our friend in there. No problem. I'll dub him back up for a while. Is he a crank? Not sure. Seems rational enough. Very sincere about the cause he's promoting. Just can't get in and take his damn head off. Take his what off? I didn't hurry tell him. He's wearing his Trivic Fox costume. Refuses to take the head off. No one's seen his face yet. You're joking. Take a look. Can't you make him take it off? Well, it's a bit difficult. I'd rather talk him into doing it. I mean, if he demands to keep it on, it would then have to get physical. To be honest, I don't think it really warrants that. This is ridiculous. I know. Sir, madam. Excuse me, but my name is Williams, and this lady is Mrs. Jones. We understand you have Mrs. Jones' son, Leroy Winston Jones, in custody here, and we would like to speak to the officer in charge concerning him, if that can be arranged. Well, I'm not sure, sir. But if you'd like to wait over there, I'll see what I can find out. Thank you. Uh, your manners are impeccable, Mr. Dean. We may sit down now. It's my boss, Inspector Forbes. Would you like a word with you? How do you do, Inspector? Mr. Dean. <laughs> Do please sit down, Mr. Dean. Well, now, uh, Mr. Dean, uh, Sergeant Barrett here has been telling me about your little problem. What uh, problem is that precisely, Inspector? Your refusal to take your um, <clears throat> costume off. Yes, well, I have tried to explain. Oh, yes, it has been explained to me, Mr. Dean. I'm completely naked under here, you know. Naked? Except for my underpants, that is. That's what he says. Well, that really isn't a problem, Mr. Dean. I mean, we do have uh, clothes in the, um, the, the, the station that we can let you borrow. Inspector, is there a law against my wearing clothes of my own choosing? No, not exactly. Well, then, I choose to wear what I've got on. After all, it's not indecent, is it? Well, no. Which is I mean, more I than to be said for those people who hunt Harrison killers. Where it is the fox. <clears throat> Look, Mr. Dean, I'm not unsympathetic to your cause. Uh, but this is a police station, and uh, you are under arrest for assault. Now, we do have procedures, and uh, one of them is that we do not conduct interviews with people on criminal charges who have their head covered with a, a bag, a, a mask, a costume head, or, or anything. So if you do not want it forcibly removed and you want to get out of here, I suggest that you take it off now and you talk to me face to face. Uh, is that clear? Are you a mother, Inspector? Yes, Did I you know to... that heavily pregnant foxes and nursing mothers are often hunted to death? Look, Mr. Dean, Fox I hunters th block our births and badger sets the night before a hunt to ensure that the foxes are forced to run until they're exhausted. And even if a fox does find an unblocked earth, if these sportsmen will usually either evict their quarry by sending the terriers down after it and hunt it again, or dig the fox out with shovels and kill it. Pure savagery. I agree. Uh, but did you know, Mr. Dean, that some elderly people can be hunted and killed for their few meagre belongings while innocently going about their business? Uh, I'm sorry. Now, I'm talking about perspective and priorities, Mr. Dean. My priorities as a policewoman and as a human being. 
Now, I'm talking about another sort of blood sport which makes the killing of wild animals as loathsome it is of somewhat less consequence. Now, if you want to protest against fox hunting, fine, you have my vote, but you do not have my time, nor that of my officers. Especially when we're in the middle of an investigation into the brutal murder of an old man. Now, do I make myself clear? I'm sorry. Uh, I hadn't realized my stand would cause such disruption. I just had this idea there might be some publicity value oh, for the Mr. course. Oh, Mr. Dean, if you cooperate, I will personally phone the press and they will have reporters waiting at the door when you leave. Now, you will have all the publicity you want and with my blessing, believe me. Don't you think we ought to call the station? What for? Just to let them know. Know what? Well, we've got a suspect under observation. We haven't yet. I just thought the suspect's name might be of some use to Inspector Forbes in her interrogation of Jones, that's all. No use at all if it's not the bastard we want. Don't worry. If it is the right one, no one's going to complain. And it won't do either of us any harm to get an independent body on this, will it? Murder! No, no. I done no murder, not me. Right. You ain't laying that one on me. A bit of smoke, I'll stick up my hands. Look, I want to see my lawyer. I didn't have nothing to do with killing no old geezer. Well, he's dead. And so far you haven't given me any answer to suggest that you had nothing to do with him. There's plenty of reason to make me think you're Not me, dead. not me. I was down the club when that went off. The youth club? Yeah, I was there. I said I was there. Why didn't you say so before? I did not say I was there. You didn't say what time you were there. I was there the times you said. I was there the times Between you... Between 10 and 10.30? Yeah, definitely. I remember now. Now you remember. Look, I didn't do anything. I can prove it. Ask me mates. Ask Willie. He'll tell Who's you. Who's Willie? Mr. Williams. He'll tell you I was there. Yeah, you make sure you get that down. Mr. Williams. He'll tell you I was there at that time. West Indian, is he, this Mr. Williams? Yeah. He's black. What does that make him? A liar? I just want to get a fact straight, son. And that chip on your shoulder become an anchor. When you calm down, sit down, before it drags you down. That's bloody easy for you to say, isn't it? You ain't black. Neither am I a racialist. It's more than I can say for you. Me? Racialist? <laughs> Works both ways, son. But didn't you know that? I can't say I've noticed. Not from where I'm standing. Well, you're the one that's been hostile and aggressive. Know what you accuse us whiteys of? Bullshit. I'm the one who's been locked up and fitted up for something that I ain't done. I didn't kill nobody. I wouldn't do nothing like that. I swear to God. I wouldn't do anything like that. I wouldn't do it. I swear to God. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And there are at least 20 other kids who were in the club during that time who can confirm what I'm telling you, Chief Inspector. Well, then. I think I know what you're thinking, sir. But these are basically a good bunch of kids. They aren't going to get together in some kind of black conspiracy to cover for someone they think did such a terrible thing. He's telling the God's truth. Leroy is not perfect, I know that. And he don't understand my way of doing things no more than I understand his. But I know he would never do something so wicked. And God is my witness. Mrs. Jones, uh, I've explained the circumstances that brought your son to our attention. And what you tell me, what you're both telling me, may very well be true. But until such time as we can either confirm or disprove his alibi, then I'm afraid he's going to have to stay here. In that case, uh, would it be possible for Mrs. Jones to see us and talk to him? No, I'm sorry, I can't permit that. What do you think? As to deny it, whatever, doesn't he? Hmm. You got any facts, eh? Well, to try. No. Well, 
give it a bit longer. Well, it's not as good as Acapulco gold, but it'll do for now, won't it? Tom. How long since you left school, Leroy? So I was 16, two years. You been out of work all that time? More or less. You know, more or less? I've done a bit part-time, odd jobs, you know. You think that makes you a special case? If you're one of several million out of work, the vast majority of you aren't black. Yeah. What sort of odd jobs? I like messing with cars. A bloke used to know my old man. He's got a garage. He lets me help out now and then. And I'll do a bit of labouring on the lump. The money you earned from this, is that what bought the uh, gold watch and the chain? I didn't teeth them. So you bought them? I paid for them, yeah. With your earnings? Sort of. Sort of? You mean you got them cheap? Yeah. Well, because they were stolen? Yeah. By you? No. Someone you know? Well, Randy, yours. Leroy. These are I know, yeah. Did he go to the youth club? Yeah, he used to till Willie slung him out. How did Willie do that? He didn't like his evil ways. Unconstructive. Selling gear to the kids. What? Drugs? Everything. Jewelry. Well, um, that he got from stealing by mugging people? Willie didn't know. He just guessed. Did you know? Leroy. Mugging is one thing, murder is another. Now, did you know? Yeah. I didn't murder nobody, right? Right? Or beat nobody. Well, if there wasn't anyone to buy the stuff, there would be no need to steal it, would there? Now, I think you'd better give us his name, don't you? And you're absolutely certain that this boy, John Benjamin, was the person you saw talking to Leroy Jones outside the club at this time stated, 10.40? I'm certain, Chief Inspector. It's a bit late for a youth club to be open, isn't it, Mr. Williams? Like I said, some of the kids have formed a steel ban and last night was practice night. They're keen to get it together for next month's carnival. And you banned John Benjamin from the club because you suspected him of selling stolen goods to the other kids. Suspected, yes. Nothing else. I gave your officers his name only because of what I've heard some of the kids say about him. That he was a mugger? Yes. Well, if you banned him, what was he doing hanging around outside the club? Business as usual. There's not a lot I can do about that. But I would like to make it absolutely clear that I have no idea if Benjamin had anything to do with what happened to the poor man last night. He was just someone I suggest your officers talk to. And now you're equally certain that Leroy Jones was in the club from about 9 p.m. until he left after you saw him talking to John Benjamin. I'm certain, Chief Inspector. Let's go. All right, Mr. Williams, if you'd care to sign this. Don't worry, Mrs. Jones. I've got Mr. Williams' telephone number. I'll contact him just as soon as anything comes up. I promise. Thank you, Thank you. Chief Inspector. Right. No, no, he's not still here, is he? Bailed out in his own surety a little while ago. That is exhibit number one for the magistrates. Inspector Forbes sorted it all out, by the way. Did she? Bill, we've got the name of the other boy. Jones is still denying he was involved, but he hasn't got the other names. It's got to be him. Oh. And the name he came up with wouldn't be Johnny Benjamin, by any chance, would it? Right. Had uh, Jones' mother and a Mr. Williams in. Now, Mr. Williams made a statement declaring that Jones was in that club from around 9 until about quarter to 11. Also claims there's a bunch of kids down there who will support that alibi. Don't believe it. It's got to be a fabrication. Fox hunting exists for the same despicable reason. But the now illegal pastime, the top fight, the gun fight with bear baby. Why 
Why shouldn't they lie? People commit perjury in court every day for their friends, relatives, sometimes even for complete strangers. <laughs> it seems there's been a cock up. They coughed the lot in the car on the way here. Uh, and the charge will now be murder. Murder? Mr. Mullery died, as you would have discovered had you bothered to radio in. Well, I would have done Never so. Never mind the excuses. I'll hear them later. Uh, Maggie, I think maybe you ought to have a word with Mrs. Jones, don't you? 